Viewers hope you are all well. Through today's video, we will try to show you how to configure a router brand called Digisol Router, and try to talk about some detailed options of the router, and try to share with you the pros and cons of this router, and how to use the router so that you can use the router to the maximum or get the best benefits. Now you can see the interface on our screen to come here. You can see an IP address behind the router. According to the IP address, you can come to this control panel through Internet Explorer. Normally the addresses are usually like 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.0.1 and in this router by default, no password is required to enter the admin. Just type admin in username and click login. As you can see now we have entered into our router control panel or user interface and the first page we see is basically the information status of the router. From here you can see what model your router is then how long it has been online. And then you, you can see the date and time, then the firmware version, then there is the SKD version, then there is the date it was made and that version, then there is the serial number, and then there is the DHCP server enabled here. Then there are the MAC address numbers. Then you can see inside the wireless configuration, you can see various types of wireless mode information, such as wireless enable mode, access point, SSID. Then you can see which channel the frequency is being transferred to. Then you can see WPS. Then you can see the repeater status. And at the bottom, you can see the WAN configuration status. Now we will click on the active client table option and see what options are there. Basically, in the active line table, we can see that there are three devices connected here. First, we can see the active wired client table, and here two devices are connected, and the MAC of the devices, the ID and IP address are shown here. Next is the active wireless client table, a device is connected, and the IP and MAC address of that device is shown here. Here, basically, the list of all types of active devices connected with the router is shown in table. The next option is statistics. Through this option, we can see a table showing the Ethernet ports of the router and which Ethernet ports are working, which are empty, and the amount of data transfer from one port wireless port. The TX and RX packets are shown here. Now, we will start the basic setup of the router. That's why we will go to the tab written setup above. Here, we can see after entering the setup tab, there are two options, one local network, another internet setup. Basically, we will now start Internet Setup option. Inside the Internet Setup, you will see an option named WAN Interface Setup. From there, you have to select WAN Access in this WAN Interface option. In most cases, it can be seen that the type of Internet ISP we use mainly uses POPO this option. Also, many ISPs use static IPs and dynamic Internet. So if you use Internet settings, you need to use the DHCP option. If you are using the POPO type of Internet, your internet company will provide you with a username and a password. In many cases, these settings may also include a DNS server address. If you do not have a DNS server address, you can use the default DNS server address. For example, Google's DNS server address is 8.8. 8.8. If your connection is made with a static IP, your internet service provider must provide you with the necessary information, such as IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway through which you can complete your static IP connection. Looking down a bit you will see here is the WAN link speed. Here you must select 100 Mbps full duplex speed. Now you can see here it says MAC clone. In some ISPs the MAC is blocked when you connect the router. So the new router you have to make MAC clone while installing. In this case, if you are in such a situation, then you can clone the MAC clone of your previous router here. If you are a client of a dynamic network, such as if you have another router inside your home, from that router you want to connect to a new router. This will be considered a dynamic connection, and in that case you will configure it as a DHCP client here to configure DHCP. Nothing is required. Just enable the DHCP option and connect the cable from your mother router's LAN to the WAN port to make the connection. Nowadays, there are many service providers who provide internet connection with DHCP option in this way. You don't need to do any router configuration. We'll take a look at the next option, local area setup. From here, you can change your LAN interface IP if you want. And then you can see your router's DHCP mode is turned on. In that case, you can turn it on if you want. And you'll see your IP, you can change the pole range from here. 
From here, you can customize your DNA servers to your own server needs. There is another option through this router from where you can configure DHCP static IP. You can now see on the screen that option through this option, you can configure DHCP static IP by IP and MAC address, where that MAC address will hold that static ID. If you only connect this router to the internet, then you put it here as access point. If you connect to another router or want to connect via wireless or want to extend the range, then you connect with client mode. Here you can see first that wireless network setting there you will enter the network name in the SSID field. Edit the wireless name and scroll down and set a password from the security option. We are unable to show the next settings in the video due to the inevitable process of destroying the next video footage. Hopefully, we will try to discuss the next settings in detail with you in the future.